Hi, I'm Maggie Cavey. I'm an educator with Maryland Environmental Service. I'm here with a team of educators from MES processing and tagging our Terrapins, who are part of the Port of Baltimore Head Start program. All these turtles today are going to get a check over, we're going to weigh and measure them, we're going to give them a tag today, a pitch tag, a passive integrative transponder, so that way we can kind of keep track of them, and kind of preparing them for their next step, which will later be released at the end of the year. We're here at Arlington Echo Outdoor Education Center today, and we're fortunate enough that it's beautiful outside and we get to tag our terrapins out here. Hi, I'm Caitlin Eversmeyer with Maryland Environmental Service and I'm one of the environmental educators. So today I'm going to show you the actual process of tagging. Uh, the first thing that we do is we identify the terrapin and this terrapin is from Kent School, fourth grade and its name is Little Spot X. Very cute. So now that we confirmed which terrapin this is, the second thing that we do is we identify its notch code. And we do that by looking at the back of its shell. Alright, so now we are looking at the back of our terrapin, which is the carapace shell. This is where we determine the notch code, which is the unique number for each terrapin. The way that we do that is we look at the outer scoots, the marginal scoots, these outer boxes. Each terrapin has 12 marginal scoots on the right and 12 marginal scoots on the left and there has been a notch taken out of their shell when they were first hatched on Poplar Island. That way we can identify one terrapin from another. The way that we count the notch code is we start at the top at zero, and then we move over to the right, one. That's where you see our first notch, so it's one R, because it's one on the right. We do it again, we start back at the top, and we count over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we stop at this because there's this little notch right there. So the entire notch code for this terrapin is 1R10R. All right, so we're back here with Little Spot X and he or she is about to get its PIT tag. But PIT tag stands for Passive Integrative Transponder. Basically, it's a microchip. It's about the size of a grain of rice and it has a unique number associated with it. So after we release Little Spot X back into the wild, if we recapture him or her, uh, we can scan it with our reader and then we can look in our tracking sheet and we can find out its name and what school it came from and all the information that we collected on it. So I'm going to put this back into our ethanol, that way we make sure it's nice and sanitized. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip Little Spot X over and we are going to insert the pit tag into one of its back legs. So if this is something that you're not comfortable seeing, you can look away just for a quick second. All right, so now that I have his leg pulled out, I am going to use some betadine to prep the skin. That way we're not introducing any type of bacteria into our terrapin. So now his, his or her skin is nice and clean, there's no germs, and I already loaded one of the pit tags into our syringe, so it's already inside, and I'm going to make a small incision, a little poke right by its leg, right under its knee, we're going to go in, and then you're going to follow the needle, it goes just under the skin, we're making sure we're not hitting any bone or muscles. We're going to lift up and we're going to push, and then we, once we get to the fatty part of our terrapin, you can see the pit tag will go into our terrapin. Hi everybody, I'm Laura, and right now I am taking some physical measurements of these turtles. This little guy has already been tagged, and he is, or she is from Fort Smallwood Elementary in Mr. Webster's class. So shout out to Mr. Webster and everybody at Fort Smallwood Elementary. Um, first thing we're gonna do is check the code on the pit tag. So Maggie, this turtle is 982. 
Eight six zero. Can you read that back to you? Yes, please. Eight nine two. Wait. One. Say that again. Eight. No. Nine eight two. One two six zero five seven seven zero two eight six zero. Correct. And then we're going to measure the length of this turtle shell from. Did you plaster on first? The neck to the tail. We always measure in metric. So this plaster on length is 53.10 millimeters. Carapace length is the shell on the turtle's back, 62.80 millimeters. Shell width is next. Widest point side to side. That measurement is 48.00 millimeters. And finally, we measure shell height from back to belly. And that measurement is 27.57 millimeters. The weight on this turtle is 45 grams. This turtle will go back in its bucket and on to the next step. Any bubbles or discharge out of its nostrils that would indicate a respiratory problem. Looking good, breathing fine. Checking for any skin issues. Can I have your leg, please? Thank you. And check all his legs. Sometimes they're a little stubborn. There we go, looking good. We're gonna press all along Mr. Shellington's shell. Check for any soft spots. Everything's looking in tip-top shape. Take care, Shellington. Hi, my name is Mary Chiarella and I'm an Outreach and Education Specialist with Maryland Environmental Service. MES works with the Port of Baltimore to teach people about dredging and restoration in Maryland at places like Poplar Island, which is where I'm standing here. I'm at the Poplar Island land base, which is where our boat takes off from to take people to Poplar Island. Throughout this whole week, the MES education team has been focused on one of our really cool projects as part of our dredging and restoration teaching, which is our Head Start Terrapin program. So you guys have been hearing from other MES educators about the Head Start Terrapins. We've collected them, we've gone ahead and given them pit tags, our passive integrated transponders. The Terrapins have met with our team of veterinarians to go ahead and get a checkup, and now they're ready to go back out to Poplar Island in just a few minutes. So we're gonna be sending them back out there to be returned to the wild. You guys have been doing an amazing job of caring through that for them throughout this entire year. So during the year, you've learned about terrapins, about where they live, about their restored habitat on Poplar Island. You've taken care of them, given them this perfect habitat inside your classroom, given them food, the perfect tank conditions, water and salinity, and raised them so that they're getting a head start in life. Most of the terrapins, when you got them, were about the size of a quarter, so they're really tiny. We sometimes joke that they're kind of like chicken nugget size, so they're really edible when they're first hatched. When they go back out to Poplar, most of our terrapins are about the size of a, a small cheeseburger, so they're about this large, and some are even bigger. So you're making sure that your terrapins grow really healthy and strong and get a head start on life. One of the other things that we know from our researchers who you guys help out, our research team from Ohio University, is that terrapins who grow up in head starting programs, like the ones that you guys have participated in, um, help the terrapin populations in the Chesapeake Bay. Because your terrapins grow so much larger during such a short period of time, they can reach a point where they can lay eggs a couple years earlier than terrapins that grow up entirely in the wild on Poplar Island. So while a terrapin in the wild might take, uh, might take seven or eight years to be at a point where it can lay eggs, our Head Start terrapins might be able to lay eggs at four or five years of age, which is amazing. So you guys are not only learning about terrapins, providing your terrapins amazing homes, helping our team at Ohio University by giving them data and research about how your terrapins are growing, but you're also helping terrapin populations in the Chesapeake Bay. 
So you guys have done this amazing thing. Thank you so much for participating in Terrapin Head Starting. We're gonna get ready to send our Terrapins out to Poplar Island and you're gonna meet up with our education team out there to see the releases. Classroom of 
Doug Spincher. We have from WLMS, we have Oprah, and we have Michelle. Very cool names. Bring them out for you guys. Here they are. Now we're going to release them. Mr. Show, we have a turtle here. From City Spring Elementary School, from the classroom of SQs, we have Paris. school. From the classroom of Eddie Waldron, we have Franklin. From Norrisville Elementary School, from the classroom of Jay Keller, we have Squirt. Not so much a Squirt anymore. Bubbles in here. From the classroom of Kay Bono from Salem Avenue Elementary School, we have their turtle ready for release. From the South Hagerstown School, we have, uh, from the classroom of Grimes, we have their turtle. Naval Academy Primary School. In the classroom of Vanessa Crosby and Christy Woody, we have Captain Jimmy. From the classroom of Nicole Hoffner, we uh, from the Cherokee Lane School, we have Pluto. From the classroom of Diana Herr from the Summit School, we 
have their turtle. And last but not least, we have from the Fountaindale School, from the classroom of Eric Brigland. I messed it up, I apologize. But we have your turtles. And here they both are. I doubt I did. Great name. 